Needle in a Haystack, featuring illustrations by Sam Yang, story by Nicola Price. From her seat on the edge of the rooftop, Dash looked down upon the rooftops of Coppertown, through to the thick layer of smog that separated the sprawl from the rest of Metrix. In the distance, the automatons of Zinnia Park moved and shifted on their pedestals, dancing against the faint light of the Gigadrill elevator. Dash watched as a ball of molten plasma dropped from the top of the elevator, plummeting it to the mining pits far below. Oi, you listening or what? Ricky's eyebrows furrowed, nose wrinkling as Dash finally looked in his direction. Uh, kinda? Not really. I'm trying to tell you. He drawled, rolling his eyes. We got a good'un. Pulled off a big heist a couple of days ago. Gonna keep us all in food for a week. Easy. Smug old trout didn't see us coming. One of the other boys passing by cut in with a laugh, tossing Ricky a bruised apple. Ricky caught it in one hand, ruffling the boy's bright ginger hair with the other. I'm telling you, you should join us for the next one. I got a tip. Ricky stopped when Dash immediately groaned, shaking her head. If I had a copper for every time you've said that, no, really, just, just hear me out. I got a tip, he continued, blatantly ignoring Dash pulling a face at him. About the guards and this load from Cogworks, right? Big load, big cash, bunch of tenant and stuff, just wanting to go down to some private merc company. We don't even need to steal all of it. We just sack full of the stuff and run and we'll be well minted. Dash blinked, raising an eyebrow. Ricky, you know how many guards they put on anything made with tenant and ore? Everyone's trying to get their hands on it. But I got a tip, been a delay, not going to be able to get all of it for another couple of weeks. We got a plan. No way. Besides, what happens if you get caught? Your luck can't hold out forever. Can't blame me for trying, Tex. Ricky shrugged. Sides, it's better than starving. You always say that. You could make stuff, you know. You'd be good at it. Dash tossed back her hair, grinning. I made 15 credits a couple days ago. Sold one of my gadgets in the markets. Ricky chuckled, shaking his head. <laughs> sure, Red. And how much you spend making it? It was made out of scrap. Oh, so that's why your suit looks like that. Like what? Your suit looks like something you found in a junkyard. It's called the D-R-E-S-S, -S, Dash hissed, crossing her arms. It's a state-of-the-art prototype. Grinning, Ricky pointed at a loose wire poking out of her chest plate. I told you, it's a prototype. She quickly tucked the wire back behind the metal, glaring at him. I've still got more changes to implement. Clearly, he dodged her swipe with a laugh, nudging her aside. Lax, Tex. Look, you stick to making gadgets, and I'll stick to what I do best. Being a pain? Loitering? Throwing rocks at Zinnia automatons? Ha. Ha. Ricky patted his chest. Being the bandit king, course! He shouted the last part, grinning when all the street kids on the rooftop leapt to their feet, whooping loudly. The oldest among them, a guy with a hooked nose and dark eyes, whistled sharply through his teeth. Thanks, Beak. Ricky turned back to Dash with a wink, biting into the bruised apple with a sharp crunch. You're gonna get caught sooner or later, you know. Nah. Ricky spit out an apple seed, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. You know I always land on my feet. He startled when Dash suddenly shot up, jumping to her feet. Land on your feet? You're a genius! Leaping off the crates, she flew toward the edge of the roof, heading for the ladder. Later, rat boy! See ya, Tex! Ricky called after her, shaking his head. If there was one thing that Dash had inherited from her parents, it was their single-minded focus when inspired by a new idea. Where her parents were both scientists studying in the field of alchemy, spending weeks on the study of a new chemical compound or metal, Dash had found her passion in the area of mechanology. In the grip of invention, she quickly lost track of time, barely sleeping until she had finally given life to the latest prototype. Dash laced up the boots, attaching the metal components one by one and checking the fit. Once everything was inserted and calibrated, she stood, testing the weight. Oh. Oh yeah. Putting her weight onto her toes, she felt the boots accommodate the shift in balance, quickly adjusting to stabilize her weight distribution. With a grin, Dash quickly put on the remaining components of the DRESS, -E dashing outside the moment she had secured the last buckle. In record time, she made it to the Midtown Markets and clambered up onto the levels above, climbing the ladder onto the street gang's hideout. Yet, as she stepped onto the rooftop, she came to a halt, frowning. 
The kids seemed agitated, checking their surroundings, talking quietly amongst themselves. She looked around, expecting to see Ricky perched on the crates as per usual, but he was nowhere to be seen. Dude, where the hell? Cleaners, man. Guys, guys. As she approached one of the groups, they quieted, turning towards her with matching frowns. Beak straightened, his expression dark as he met her eyes. Hey, Tex. Might greeted her quietly, eyes a bright blue against his sooty cheeks. Hi, Dash. Low Tex. Hey, Dash. Hey, guys. Any of you seen Ricky? The boys looked at each other, hesitating. Finally, Beak spoke up. It's not good, Tex. What do you mean? Dash frowned. Hasn't been here in about a week. And you have no idea where he might be? When all of them immediately shook their heads, Dash groaned, running a hand through her hair. The hell has he gotten himself into this time? Dunno. Tried looking in the usual spots, but he's gone. Probably dead. Might! One of them hissed, but a few others nodded along. It's true. It's been gone a week and a half. Ain't never been gone like this before. Yeah, he's dead. We gotta go. They're on to us. Yeah, cleaners are probably on their way now. Guys! Dash cut in, shaking her head. This is Ricky we're talking about. Remember that time he spent two days hiding under a market stall because the enforcers were trying to find him? Or the time he stole a miner's hat and convinced the charge hand he was taken over for the night? Or when he snuck into Natalia's and stole a whole satchel of their prototypes? While a couple of the kids nodded hesitantly, muttering to themselves, Beak just shook his head. You don't get it, Tex. We've been looking for him for a week, and he's just... gone. Look, some of the boys already left, gone to lie low for a bit. We gotta keep moving, or it's us next. With a nod, he got up and walked over to one of the other groups, crouching to talk to a younger boy with a ginger hair. The hell have you gotten yourself into now, rat boy? In the main reception of the registry, Dash stood in line, waiting to reach the main desk. Next to her, a newcomer to the city sat on one of the benches, looking over some papers with a small frown. The couple ahead of her were in a quiet, heated discussion while a man stood on her other side, reading a Vox-issued newspaper. While Dash had been here only once, it was exactly where she remembered. Even the staff looked as if they hadn't changed, and Dash half expected one of them to see her and run over, asking what she'd blown up this time. Though, to be fair, she hadn't known the scientist was running contagion tests on those rats. Next. The couple moved along, revealing the receptionist sitting behind the desk. Her dark brown hair was tied into a neat bun, not a hair out of place. Her smile revealing two rows of perfectly white teeth. Hello, welcome to the registry. How can I help you today? I need information on someone? Of course. The receptionist nodded, fingers poised over the keys of her typographer. Your name, please? Uh, Dash Teclo? The woman stilled, gaze flicking up to stare at Dash's face. Her expression cracked into a nervous smile, face several shades paler than it had been previously. Miss Teclo, it's a pleasure to have you in the registry. Please, if you wouldn't mind, I just need a name to begin my search. That is, if you have one. Uh, Ricky Royce. Thank you, Miss Teclo. Her fingers flew across the keys, eyes tracking across whatever results came up on her screen. Uh... I, I mean, I'm, I'm very sorry to say this, Miss Teclo, but there, there doesn't appear to be a Mr. Royce at the Academy, and I'm afraid that I don't have the clearance to access Teclo Corporation records. Of course. No, no, he's, he's not. He isn't a member of the Academy or Teclo. He, he's a street kid. Oh, I, I see. Allow me to check our records, Miss Teclo. A second later, she nodded. My apologies, but there are no records of anyone with that name. Do you have an ID number for him, perhaps? Look, just Dash leant over the counter, eyebrows raised. Let me have a look at those records, yeah? I got this device in my bag that can charge your typographer, she began, ignoring the dawning look of sheer panic on the receptionist's face. It'll make it easier to access your records. I know how slow these things go, so just let me- Miss Teclo, my sincerest apologies, but you are not authorized to- It'll make searching all of your records so much faster. There's got to be information on them somewhere. I must insist that you refrain from tampering with registry property. Couldn't possibly have searched your entire database. Please, Miss Teclo! Just let me- Dash leaned over and tried to grab the technographer from the desk, a connection socket emerging from her gauntlet. A second later, a hand grabbed her by the collar, hauling her away from the device. Let me go! I only need a second! In answer, the security guard carried her out the door, placing her firmly on her feet just outside. 
The receptionist came rushing out a moment later, grasping Dash's hand with a fixed smile. Please, allow me to apologize on behalf of the registry for this disturbance. We'd like to gift you these tokens for your next visit, and I do hope that you continue to use the registry services in the future. But I only need to- My sincerest apologies, Miss Teclo. The receptionist smiled wanly as she stepped backward, ducking behind the looming figure of the security guard. He glowered down at her, face set with determination. With a sigh, Dash stuffed the tokens into one of the pouches on her belt, watching the receptionist hurry back inside. The security guard stared her down as she turned away, stowing the connection port back inside her gauntlet. With the number of agencies, organizations, and private investigators available in metrics, Dash had expected that at least one would be able to help her. But no matter where she went, the answer was always the same. From Beacon to Zeska's, the Teclo database to Vox Press, nobody seemed to have information on Ricky Royce, let alone any hint of a location. Still, Dash pressed on, determined to find something, anything. That night, over dinner, her parents argued about a Teclo scientist's investigation into the boundary layer effect and their development of a bladeless turbine. Everyone knows mechanical vapor recompression is much more efficient, Dash muttered, picking idly at her dinner with a frown. Finally, her parents turned to look at her, her father raising an eyebrow. Before they could launch into further discussion on the matter, she cleared her throat. <laughs> I, um, I wanted to ask you about something? When she was sure she had at least part of their attention, she continued telling them about her search for Ricky Royce and how she'd failed to find any information on him, even when checking the Teclo database. Neither were particularly surprised to hear that she'd snuck into the complex and accessed the database without permission. Well, no, there wouldn't be anything. In most cases, there would be little reason for the Teclo database to keep information on scuttlers. Statistically, it's likely that your friend is long gone by now. Taking a sip of her wine, her mother blinked. Oh, yes, how has your testing been going? Any luck with the latest prototype? Dash half-heartedly responded with something about last week's experiment, barely paying attention as she stared blankly at her dinner. As expected, her parents soon turned the conversation back to their own work, leaving her to stab at her centennial-produced cutlet in relative peace. Knew it was a long shot, but I had to try. Dash glared at the fake meat, poking it idly. They're like ghosts. How am I supposed to find someone who barely even exists? Pausing, she sat upright, gesturing with her fork. Unless I'm looking for the wrong thing. If I can't find the person, maybe I can track the thing instead. What was that, dear? Dash looked up to see her parents staring at her and grinned. Hey, how can I get information on a cogwork shipment of devices made with tenetanor? 